Mouse Scouts Episode 1. Welcome to Mouse Scouts, the show dedicated to bringing you Disney park tips, inspiration, and family-friendly fun. My name is Chris. And I'm Megan. And this episode is Monday. We are doing a park tip for you guys. And in this episode, the park tip is all about the benefits of rope drop. So uh, I guess let's just jump right in. What are some of the benefits of rope drop? (laughs) Well, first of all, rope drop is when you are there for opening. Um, If the park opens at 8 o'clock, you are standing on Main Street ready to head for your first destination, you know, by 7.55, ready to to get going. Um, The reason rope drop is important is because you actually get the most done for your time in the first um, two hours, if the park opened at 8, before 10 o'clock. Being there for rope drop means that you can make a beeline for your first ride. Some rides, um, the the real popular ones, Space Mountain, um, Star Tours, the line gets long amazingly fast. Um, So being able to head straight there will really uh, shorten your wait um, and allow you to do as much as you can in the first couple hours before it starts to get busy. Um, It's, it's not, it's not uncommon for you to get like, you know, three or even four things done in that time, maybe even more depending on what you're doing. Well, with, with our little guys who are, um, too scared to go on most of the exciting rides. So we're limited to more of the slower, mundane, usually shorter line rides. We can often get six or seven things done in the first two hours before 10 o'clock. And at 10 o'clock, there's a noticeable increase in crowds. Um, So the uh, main gates actually open about 15 minutes before the park opens. At that time, um, the stores on Main Street are open. Um, The little shops that are there, there's a Starbucks So you you can get in, and there's often also characters that are around. So if you want to start with your meet and greet characters right away, they're there waiting for you. And you can get your coffee beforehand too, right? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Because that's important to me. (laughs) (laughs) That's always Chris's first stop is the coffee. Mm -hmm. So, And then you want to um, figure out, know ahead of time what your first stop is going to be, and make sure that you are standing in the appropriate area to head straight for that place without having to cross a bunch of the crowd because everybody, as soon as those that rope is dropped, everybody's going to be moving as quickly as they can to get towards their first stop. So if the, your first stop is going to be Indiana Jones, make sure you're standing over by Adventureland so that you can head straight there. Um, what about, uh, what about uh, Fast Passes? Fast passes, you can generally start getting right away, but they aren't good until um, a couple of hours in. Okay. So the time on them might not be until an hour after park opening. Um, usually when we do fast passes right away, we will split and one of us will go get in line for whatever it was that we wanted to do. And the other one will go get the fast passes. Mm, that's a good tip. Yeah. Depending on what it is that we wanted to do. Okay. So now... Is it is it the same with uh, it's the same with both Disneyland and California Adventure in general? Correct. Yes. yes. No. Um, they both in both places they have an area areas um, for the people to wait mm-hmm. until they actually like there's a literal rope keeping you from going any further, and then they wind up the rope. And then I know that in in the past, and I know that at, at Disney World they actually have a little um, show with the characters mm-hmm. to open the park, to officially open things, but they don't do that anymore at Disneyland. Um, so once the the clock strikes, you know, eight o'clock or nine o'clock or 10 o'clock, whatever time the park opens, um, there will be a, a announcement over the loudspeakers, you know, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Disneyland. And um, cast members will allow you to go past. In some cases, they might actually like walk you through so that because they want to keep people from running running is one thing that they will um stop you and ask you not to do so because they really don't want anybody to get hurt and of course running puts not just yourself at risk but other people as well so when the clock strikes make sure you know where you're going and make sure you have your slippers (laughs) that wasn't a good joke was it oh i'm sorry (laughs) Okay. Now, there, there was uh, something cool that you guys had discovered um, when 
By the way, she takes all three kids to Disneyland by herself sometimes. I think she's crazy, but you know, this is one of the reasons why we're doing this podcast. But one of the one of the really cool things she discovered was at California Adventure after rope drop The first ride they were going to go on was Monsters, Inc., and so they made a beeline over there. Tell me what happened. Well, we got over to Monsters, Inc. to find Sully standing in front of it. Surprise, surprise, along with several cast members. And um, it turns out that over there at Monsters, Inc., when they opened the park, and I don't know if it was just maybe just on the weekends or if they do this every day, but they, um, the kids who were heading straight there, they gather them up and they um, have a screaming contest because they need to fill the scream canisters to start the ride for the day. If you remember in Monsters, Inc., screams are energy, and so they need to fill the scream canisters to get enough energy to start. And the way they do this is that they, they get all the kids to start um, to scream. And then they actually, cast members and Sully, group together and they discuss and they figure out which kid they thought was the best screamer. And um, to our delight that day, our daughter was the best screamer. She was so cute. She plugged her ears before she did it because <laughs> she doesn't like loud noises. But hey, she's a good screamer. And so not only did she get a little certificate, which looked like a Monsters, Inc. um, time card, but she got to lead the line into the ride. So she was we were the first ones on the ride for the day. And that time card that we got was a front of the line pass for Monsters, Inc., enabling us for the rest of the day to go to the um, exit to go in and we could get right on the ride. So that was a really cool Perk, and I'm um, hoping we can find if some of the other places do things like that, too, because I had never heard that anywhere. Yeah, you know, um, listeners, if, if you guys, you know what, I'm, I'm going to call our listeners Mouse Scouts, because we're, we're all Mouse Scouts, aren't we? Yes. So Mouse Scouts, <laughs> if, if you have uh, encountered anything like this, you know, just where, where Disney has added just that extra level of magic, you know, in our case, it was this screaming contest, and you know, th- this is just a, a whole testament to how how they create you know this whole story, and it's this, it's uh, all encompassing, and you know, you know, they they were filling up the scream canister. So, if you guys have experienced anything like that on any of the other attractions or any of the other shows, uh, write to us and let us know. We'd love to hear. Uh, what you guys have experienced as well. And you can email us at fun at gomousescouts.com. Now, did you have anything else you wanted to... One more tip that I have is that we have, at times, when we have had a ride that we really, really, really wanted to get on right away, for example, Peter Pan, most of the day we'll have a 45-minute or longer line. And um, we... Usually kind of skip that one because waiting for 45 minutes with little kids, you know, and... Um, But we discovered if we parked our stroller, in this case, we parked it in front of the baby care center, which you can get to before the rope drops. Um, We parked our stroller there. And then that way, when the rope dropped, we walked as quickly as we could. Um, I wear the baby. I had one kid in each hand. And I'm just pulling them through the crowd. That way, we are not trying to squeeze through the crowd with a big stroller because that is not easy. Um, we're not tripping people or running over people with our stroller. People are not cutting in front of our stroller and then giving us dirty looks when we run into them because we couldn't stop fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> it was just easier to get through and get um, across the bridge through the castle. And we were um, about the 20th group in line going that way. And we didn't have to stop and park the stroller in the castle. So that was a, a nice thing that we do occasionally when we're really trying to get a certain ride first. Yeah. All right. Well, that does it for this episode. We would love to answer any of your questions on the show. So if you have anything that you would like us to tackle, email us at fun at gomousescouts.com. You can find us on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram, and at Disneyland as well. Uh, on all of those social media platforms, we are at Scouts. And uh, also be sure to visit GoMouseScouts.com to pick up your free Day at Disneyland resource pack. And it's uh, right there. You'll be able to see uh, see it on the, the right-hand side of the website. It's there for you guys to get. It's free. And uh, so, yeah, until next time, we will uh, we will see you next time. <laughs> Take care. Bye. All right. Pretty good, huh?